Hey guys, hey, it's Melissa with Miller's Rustic Sawmill. Friday night, 10 o'clock. Um, doing a late night live. I'm gonna wait a few minutes to see some people hop on here. We are gonna be doing a, um, a DIY tonight. My husband is gonna be helping me because um, we were gonna just come on here and show you uh, what we're gonna be doing um, for an upcoming class that I'll be posting details about. But um, usually whenever we, I come on here, um, if you watch any of my lives, I'm usually kind of just showing off like welcome board signs and doing ladies nights. Um, so I just wanted to, we have talked about this for a while and um, up late 10 o'clock on a Friday night is it just makes me feel old whenever you say up late, but yeah, it is, it's kind of late for, for, for people over 40 maybe on a, um, Friday night, but, um, yeah, we actually had some stuff going on earlier this evening and by the time we both got home and, um, knew what we had, we had commitments to tonight at church and, um, we thought, oh, we'll go on afterwards and we're gonna make it a late night uh, live. And um, like my post said, um, we're not gonna be doing any girly stuff on the live tonight. Um, Bucky just went across the street, he'll be back shortly. And I see someone likes that we're not doing girly stuff. Um, we have a lot of ideas for the mill and for um, the shop here where we kind of come on and, and do some things. So we're gonna be actually um, coming up with some new and different things that'll be happening maybe and hopefully in the shop soon um, but that does involve um, getting some guys involved in some things that just you know happen here at the shop too as opposed to just ladies nights so um, what we're doing tonight um, the guys have cut out this project for us um, over the last week um, they when they've been able to work the temperatures here in uh, Missouri have been insanely cold. We've had a lot of snow in Northwest Missouri, so um, it's been a rough couple weeks at our sawmill business. And um, whenever the temperatures are so cold, it's it's some of those machines is harder to run and harder on them to run them than it is to just take a break and find other things to do. So um, actually, I'm going to give credit to. Bucky while he's not in here. Just kidding. Um, it, it, this is his idea. It's something that he uh, kind of brought up probably at least a month ago, maybe, maybe longer. I'm not quite sure, but um, it's something that we've talked about doing for a while. And um, so we're going to try to make it happen. And we thought, what better way than to come on and actually do this for the first time. We've never made uh, the project that we're going to make tonight. We've never done it before so it's going to be our first time um working on this together and um hopefully it goes well hi amanda um i told amanda earlier tonight she was talking about she's bought some slabs at her mill and um she's made some her and her husband and uh they've made some really cool projects out in their barn where they've taken a slab and they've used one of our big wood slabs with the live edge um for a bar top and they've got some tin, kind of like what you see on my door, the corrugated tin um, around the bottom. And then she took and um, hung another slab above and put their lights from it. And she used some pulleys and some rope to suspend it kind of over their, their other, their bar top. So I got to see pictures of that tonight. And um, Amanda works on some different projects. Well, she says she has ideas and then she um, puts the guys to work. But we were talking about torching some wood um, because she's got a table and we are actually gonna do that tonight. I told her to come on and watch because um, we're gonna torch this wood um, whenever Bucky gets back. So <laughs> that's the part that we know um, the guys are gonna like. So instead of, um, you know, just painting some boards and stenciling some stuff. Tonight we're doing a little bit of woodworking. We're gonna torch this wood um, so you can see what happens whenever you use a flame on the wood. And um, we're not gonna be scared about it. 
So, um, what? No root beer. Oh, okay. Um, but we're also going to use a stencil. Um, so we are, in, we're doing both. We're doing a project that is perfect for a couple. So we are going to have a couple's night here at the shop. Um, it is limited space. Anyone who watches our lives or follows, um, the ladies nights that we do knows that there's limited space, um, whenever we make an announcement for, uh, the shop until we get some stuff done in the basement of this place. Um, we just kind of have limited space, but, um, we will be announcing a couple's night and this is the project that we're going to have going on for couple's night. It's not... Um, we're doing a wooden American flag, so I'm just going to tell you. Um, I've got this awesome stencil, and I'll put the link up here in a little bit for this if anybody is wanting to get the star stencil. But um, this came, and whenever it came, we had, I think Bucky had already talked to me about this project, and it just it showed up the same week in the mail. Um, the place where I get my stencils uh, from is called Essential Stencil, and they had actually sent this to us in the mail, just unknowingly, not even, you know, had no clue I was, we had talked about this, had no idea that this was on our radar, but um, we have all of the pieces cut, so we are going to do a rustic American flag, and um, we are uh, proud to live here in the United States. We, you know, are proud to be American, and we think that this is something that um, is a pretty cool thing to do as a project for people, so for anyone. But um, we are going to get started on it, so I'm going to show you. Bucky just showed up. He brought me something to drink, and um, I asked him to, that's what he said a minute ago, I asked him to get me a half and half Dr. Pepper and root beer, but they only had Dr. Pepper, so this way maybe I won't cough through the whole video tonight. Um, so the size of this flag, um, I'll go ahead and tell you dimensions in case you want to know. Um, it is 32 by 20. So it's it's just a good size. It's not huge, it's not small, it's just right. It's just a good size. And um, our stencil fits on there perfect. Um, we've got all of these pieces cut out um, for the stripes. So they are all individual, if you can see. And um, none of them are alike. So that is part of the beauty of what we do at the sawmill. Nothing is ever the same. Um, nothing gets mass produced. It doesn't matter how many times you know you try to duplicate it, it's never gonna be the same because we're working with different woods, different um, trees, different logs, and the grain is never gonna be the same. You can get close, but you know, you're never gonna completely just duplicate what we do what we're doing. So I kind of came in. And I've laid this out here. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but um, I'm gonna attempt to turn my camera around real quick so I can just kind of give you an overview of this piece before we get started on it. And then I'm gonna have Bucky come on and um, he's gonna help me. We're gonna torch this wood so you can see what happens and I'll turn the camera around whenever he's doing that so you can see a close up of it. Um, we don't want you guys to feel like we're leaving the men out. So we think it's time to bring some projects in. And even for you girls and ladies that um, are wanting to do, you know, some wood projects or, you know, sometimes I'm going to be, I have a list of projects that um, I'm going to be working on and I'm going to be doing some lives with down the road that's building some things. So um, I, I just kind of want to show people, you know, some of the simple things and then some of the harder things. So some of the, I've just got a lot of ideas. So hang with us, like our page, follow us, share this video and um, stay tuned. I'm waiting on Bucky. So I'm just trying to ramble while I'm waiting on him. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, what kind of wood is this project? It's all pine. So, um, Matt, we cut all of this out with pine. Um, I'm going to turn this around, though. I'm going to show you what we're doing here. If I can flip my camera. Hang on. Okay. So, there it is. Um, hi, Trisha. 
If you guys hop on and you're watching, go ahead and say hi. I don't always know for sure if you're on or comment where you're from if you're not um, a, a Facebook regular on our lives just let us know we're located in king city missouri and um this is what we're going to be doing tonight so this is the couples project that we are going to be um having uh at our shop in king city and i will put the details of that up after we're done with this live i'll probably talk about it a little bit later um hi haley thanks for watching you're from georgia from Mississippi, from Florida. Thanks, you guys. So this is Bucky. He is with me tonight. And we are doing our first couples um, night with a couples project. So um, thanks for watching. Stick with us. We're going to show off what we're doing. We're going to um, get some stain out. We're not painting tonight. Um, I'm going to have Bucky torch some wood. So um, I am going to be using um, a stencil that I got from Essential Stencils. So if you're waiting for that, um, that's going to come in a little bit later. I just showed it a few minutes ago, but um, it's the star stencil. So um, I will have a code up for that where if you want to order uh, from Essential Stencil, you can save 10% on your order as well. So I will be posting that um, shortly too. I think I can maybe put it up I'm going to try while I'm in here. I'm not super tech savvy, but we'll give it a shot. And there it is. So there's the link for um, the stars that we're going to be using tonight. And I, I'm going to turn this back around because, so he just lit up the little torch. Um, it's just a little propane torch that we're going to torch this wood before we stain it. And I'm going to show you guys a close up. So what we're using Shouldn't he be in bed, Terry McDowell says. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Hi, Denise. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Kim. Thanks for watching. What we're doing right now, we're torching some wood. I'm going to try to get a close-up. Um, Amanda Potter, if you're still on, this is the cool part. I told you not to be afraid of it. You can see it change in there. pieces are harder than others. Hi Cheryl. I've got a lot of people watching tonight from all over the country. Those of you that are in the warm states, I'm a little bit jealous. Oh hi Kim from Southern Missouri. This is so cool. I don't know if you guys can see it changing or not. It takes a little bit of time so it's not something that you just light this torch up and it magically, all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, torches your, your wood instantly. It, it's a process, and it goes a little bit slower, so you can take your time, and you can kind of do it as much as, or as little as you want. So pull that back for just a second, hon. So you can see right here, down along these cracks, how dark it's getting. Um, Haley, we are torching the wood um, just because we're going to make this grain pop out and we're going to make it look a little bit more rustic. Um, so it has more of a rustic feel. Um, and we are torching this wood, I'll tell you, because we're going to do a couple's night here in our shop. And um, guys like fire. So to be honest, we thought it would be really cool for the guys to get to torch some wood and... Um, this is also something that sometimes people um, will tell us, like I had a friend tell me tonight that um, she was considering doing, you know, this look to um, a table that she has. And um, I told her, I'm like, I just did that for the first time. We just practiced a little bit on a piece of wood. So um, we probably could use stain to do it a little bit faster. But we were trying to get some guys involved to come up um, to a couple's night with the ladies and the flag project we thought would be a really cool way to do that. Um, and we just think it's kind of the guys, you know, guys like to light things on fire a lot of times. <laughs> and um, we thought it would be fun. And also I think that sometimes, like my friend tonight, Amanda, 
Um, sometimes you want to try things out and see, you know, kind of get a feel for it before you do it to something that you've already bought or something that you're wanting to finish. Like she's got a slab um, and she's got this table. She, she doesn't want to just torch this table never having practiced it before. So yeah, ladies like fire too. I actually had a lot of fun trying to um, get the look I wanted on the wood. And um, someone told me, oh, Rhonda, your husband makes flags and torches the wood also. Well, that's awesome. You know, I've researched, of course, how to do a lot of these, and people do them all different ways. I, I think, you know, that this is our first time making a flag. So I'm, you know, I was pretty upfront about that. Um, we're not 100% sure what we're doing. Um, that's why we're doing it tonight before we actually hold a couple's night because part of the beauty of it, I think, is failing forward, learning from what we're doing, and showing you guys, um, you know, if, if you can um, come and practice here and have fun while you're doing it with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, whoever, um, you know, then then we're going to make it happen. We're going to think we're going to have fun with that. Hi from Arkansas. Gosh, hi from Oregon. Great idea. I would end up burning myself. I kind of thought the same thing, Denise. I thought that I might burn myself too, but um, see, I'll show you how far back he is. And so now you can kind of see the difference in the wood that he's torched versus where he hasn't torched. And what we're using is pine. So, um, you know, pine, we don't have any experience with torching the wood. Some of it may torch better than others, but um, I'm just going to kind of show you. That's going to be the really cool part for, I think, the guys whenever we do this class. And the girls, too. And Amanda, if you come, you can come and practice here in our shop um, before you do try it on your table. Hi from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Illinois. That's awesome. And Missouri. Is it cold where you're at, Bobette? It's been super cold here in northwest Missouri. We sit about an hour and a half or so north of Kansas City. <clears throat> so we are located in King City, Missouri. We run a sawmill business, and um, we sell wood slabs, we sell walnut, we sell rough cut lumber. We do um, custom cutting, custom drying. On our big mill, we have um, a Lucas mill that cuts um, great big wood slabs as well. So I'll give you, this is our messy shop. I'm just going to kind of go around here while he is um, torching the wood because that's going to take, it does take a little bit of time. So whenever, um, as a couple, you come to our class, um, you're going to be here for a few hours depending on what we're doing. Denise, it's not by Branson. Um, gosh, we're probably a good four hours, five hours maybe from Branson. And Bobette, you're in the boot heel of Missouri. Lisa, you said I've you said I wanted to make one for so long, but I've been afraid. So I'm happy to see this video. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I think since you know we've done some of this stuff at the mill, I've. I'm kind of fearless about a lot of things anymore. A lot of times because my husband is a little bit fearless. <laughs> so I've just learned, I mean, whenever you're making things, you know, the worst you can do is just have to redo it or, you know, do something different. But um, I'm glad that you're watching. So um, what we're using, it's pine, and we've cut it into, um, I can tell you the lengths and dimensions and everything. Um, but this is just a little propane torch, and there may be um, a better way to torch this, but as long as we don't light anything on fire, we're, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> make um, for a better video. Yeah, my husband says it would make for a better video. Some of you would probably think that was hilarious. 
Um, would you recommend doing this with pallet wood? You know, I this is honestly our first time torching wood, so I, I don't know why you couldn't do it with pallet wood. This is very similar to the pallet that we cut at our sawmill, so um, I would say, Lisa, try it. Get out a little propane torch, or if you don't know if you don't have one, maybe find someone that you could borrow it from and give it a shot. Um, we came, I think, last night, and um, we practiced before with one board. With one board, and really it did really good. <laughs> So, um, hi from Virginia. Hi. No, we didn't put anything. Uh, Rita asked if we put anything on the wood before torching it. No. Rita, we have not put anything on this wood. Um, it is, I will tell you, um, with the nature of our business, everything that we do um, is kiln dried. So all of our wood has been dried and through the kiln process. And Matt McDonald, I wouldn't try it with pallet wood unless you know with 100% certainty that the wood hasn't touched any chemicals. That's a good point. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> um, obviously, Debbie we, Downer. <laughs> my daughter's friend has torched pallet wood. Yeah, um, we know where all of this wood came from. So that is, uh, I'm glad Matt said that because um, we've cut all of this wood ourselves. We own a sawmill business and... Um, this pine came out of our kiln, so it's all been kiln dried. Nothing's been put on it. Um, we are going to put some stain on it whenever we get done. So, Shelly, you don't you don't see me. Well, I don't know why. Um, I am gonna flip my camera back around. So, can you see now? Hopefully, there may be a lag. This is our little shop, and if you see over there, um, those are some walnut slabs. So that's kind of the nature of what we do with our business. We um, sell and cut and dry a lot of wood slabs. Um, all of the trim, all of the shelving, the door, um, everything in here we did. We bought this little, it was a church. It's a very old, old church. And it's a wreck right now. This is my stand for my tripod, so you guys can see what we're doing. But um, everything in here has come from our sawmill business. So we uh, mill wood and um, <clears throat> we do a lot of custom cutting. We do a lot of big jobs. But this is going to be a um, couple's night project at our shop. So, uh, oh, Shelly, I'm glad you see. How do you put the pieces together? Um, so each of these are all individual pieces. I can show you that. So we've cut um, all of these um, uh, individually. And um, whenever we get done, we are gonna flip it over and we have some pieces that go up and down and we're gonna glue them and staple them. Um, they could be screwed in the back as well. Like I said, um, this is our first time doing it, so it's kind of going to be a little bit of trial and error for us um, just because of that. So we've had a, we had a hard time. We were going to use, you can see our little screws sitting over there. Um, we were going to use those. Um, we decided not to. I'd rather glue them. So paper. we're going to use some wood glue on the back whenever we get done, and then each of these will get um, a staple put in them after the wood glue. So I hope that answers your question, Lisa. Pallet wood from Home Depot is damp, Erica says. I live in Southern California. Oh, Erica, um, I would be checking to make sure that you're um, getting wood that's dried um we have a moisture tester at our sawmill pallet and um yeah pallet lumber is usually green lumber yeah. um unless it's air dried lumber. unless yeah so so here's a good here's a good tip um i can tell you this and i would never have known this if it weren't for what we do with our sawmill business but um any so your lumber like if you're buying pallet wood 
and it's it's not going to be dried. If it's one inch pallet wood, not kiln dried, yeah. right? It's not kiln dried. But if it's one inch pallet wood, um, it would take a year for that pallet wood to dry. Year per inch. It's a year per inch of thickness. So I don't know if that answers your question or not, but. Um, you want to double check what you're buying is what I tell people. And unless you have somebody explain this to you, you wouldn't know. I would never know. I would never have known um, that that would make a difference. Um, I wouldn't have understood anything about the warping or the twisting or the cracking. But if you've got um, wood that you're using that isn't dried and it still has moisture in it, that moisture is going to come out sooner or later and it's going to warp or it's going to bend or it's going to twist. Um, so just uh, short of telling you in California, um, maybe look for some place that has kiln dried um, wood, or if you have a moisture tester, um, try, you know, checking out your wood to see what moisture content it's at. It should be at eight percent or below, but for you to use it for a finished product. And make sure you put it in its environment for a while before you put yeah, something yeah. together too. Okay, yeah, that's a good tip. Um, he says, you know, always kind of maybe let your wood acclimate. So if you're buying, and you know, maybe not buying pallet wood. Honestly, Erica, that'd probably be the best thing I would tell you at Home Depot um, is to, I don't, I don't know the big box stores, what they say if their wood is dry. Do you, Bucky? I I think it's supposed to be like studs and stuff like that aren't dried. And that's why if you look at the pile of studs, you see a lot of them warped. Because they come in from 10 below zero on a truck and go to a 70 degree climate. And that's what causes them to twist and buckle. I work in a grocery store and I got a small two foot pallet and burned it into make a pull stick holder to hang on a wall. That's cool, Shelly. Lynn, hi. Um, we started about 10 o'clock and um, we are making a, um, a pallet, not a pallet, we've been talking about pallet, I'm sorry. We're making a rustic um, flag, American flag. And we are torching the wood right now. Um, Lynn, we're getting ready to have a couple's night, make an announcement for a couple's night at our shop in King City, Missouri. And um, we thought this would be a fun project for couples to do um, that involves a little bit of fire and a little bit of wood. And then I'm going to be using um, a stencil that I got from Essential Stencil as well um, at the end for the stars. So um, that's what kind of what we're doing. My husband and I have a sawmill business here in King City, Missouri. And what we're using is pine that is kiln dried from our sawmill. And Erica, you're welcome. We get a lot of questions about wood and sometimes, you know, different parts of the country. I don't know what's available to you, but you might, you might just kind of check around. But moisture content is important whenever you're, you're making things, um, any kind of finished product. So you do want to be careful with what you're buying, especially if you get into a wood slabs um, where you're spending a, a lot of money. Well, I'm on my way. <laughs> Lynn, that's awesome. Lisa Jameson, I want to do a wood wall, but my fireplace, what wood would be best to use for that? Depends well, on color. Yeah, it depends on your color. Um, Lisa, I'm going to turn this around because right behind me, we have a wood wall. And um, I don't know if there's any sawmills around you or not, but all of the wood on our wall is a mixed wood wall. We have walnut up there, hickory, um, cedar, and oak, and ash. There's, that's just a good mixture. So all of the wood that you see on this wood wall, um, none of it has any stain on it. So it's all in its own natural state, and it has a clear finish of Thompson's, I think, water sealer on it. So, um, it depends on the look that you're going for, Lisa, but you, again, want to make sure if you're going to put it in your house, um, you want it to be dried. But that's, um, that's all 
lumber from our sawmill and it's um, in various widths and we kind of we've done a few of those now so we kind of got it down it takes a little bit of practice the darkest one that you see is walnut so if you wanted a wood wall in the same tones um, we have done an all walnut wood wall before in an office and um, you can see even here it doesn't even if you're using the same wood species you're gonna get different tones you know and different variations in it um, ours is I like to call it very rustic you can see this piece has you know even a, this hole in it and behind this wall is an actual um, it's all sheet rocked so um, depending on the look that you're going for um, rustic or a little bit more cleaner I always tell people just you know it's I think that's your personal preference Still torching the wood. Randy Noble says, I use dog eared cedar from Menards for my freehand carved sign. And it's not too bad as far as moisture. Thank you, Randy, for that tip. Actually, do it yourself. Or cedar will air dry the quickest of any lumber. I really, it doesn't need to be kiln dry. I don't know if I don't know if everybody heard you. Oh. Can you tell me again what you just said? So, uh, if you are going to buy lumber and you're worried about it being dried off of somebody or from a place you don't know or trust, cedar will actually air dry in just a month or two, and it won't warp and twist. Okay. Like other woods. Good tip. And thank you, Randy, for for that tip too. So this is how it's turning out. It's really popping some of the grain on that and you can see some of it's just burning. Lynn, thank you. You can do a lot of cool things with wood. We like to keep a lot of it in its natural state without using a, a whole lot of stains, but tonight we're going to actually use colored stain on this flag. We've got a blue stain and a red stain, so... Um, and you can see the difference in the grain. An open grain burns easier, I can see, than the closed flat grain of the wood. Very cool. Did you do the top one? Yeah, yeah and it didn't want to hardly burn. Awesome. So depending on how much you want this torched darkness to come out, you can keep doing it. So um, some of it is going to show up a little bit more than others just because, you know, all of our woods vary even though this is all pine it's all different different grains very cool <laughs> it keeps flashing <laughs> there's my stencil over there you guys if you've hopped on and um found us through um, Essential Stencil at all. That's my star stencil, and I was talking about it earlier. We had been talking about this uh, for quite a while, and um, that stencil just came in the mail one day, and I was like, oh, awesome. That's perfect timing because we had already been talking about this project. Lynn, stain is better to put on wood than paint. Sorry. That's not a... That's not... A dumb question. Um, no, no, no. Don't feel like that at all. No, I, you know, stain, it just depends on how you want your, um, your wood to look. There's a lot of things in here um, that I have painted. So I'm going to show you. For instance, um, let me walk over here. So um, I didn't actually paint this, but this, this is um, a home plate sign. And that is dry brushed on there. Um, I do other videos on here, 
where I use paint and stencils. And um, see, there's the back of that one. And this is cottonwood. And so um, this one is not a stain. Um, it just depends on um, this project specifically. We just kind of wanted to um, have the grain show through a little bit more and um, play around with the stain and see what happened just for the sake of not knowing really. And Lynn, I didn't, I mean, I knew that there were colored stains. I didn't necessarily know that um, you could get them in the vibrant colors like we got them, but um, it was pretty easy. I went to, we were in Lowe's and I was actually looking at some different paints and reds and blues for some Chiefs and Royal signs that we've done. And, um, what? The bottle holders, sorry. Oh, um, so whenever I found, we walked by these stains and I thought, oh, I bet that would be kind of cool. Maybe it'll let some of the grain show through a little bit. Um, we, we didn't know, but we kind of picked them out. You take them up to the counter and they mixed them right there for us. So, um, you're trying to find a couple of tree stumps for stools for my grandson. She's wondering if there's anything to kill the bugs inside the tree stumps. Ooh. I don't... You know, that's a good question. That is a good question, Lisa. I, I don't know the answer to that, to be honest. Um, the kiln kills bugs. I was going to say, know. you know, we always tell people whenever the wood goes through the kiln process, um, like at our sawmill... Um, it kills everything in the woods. So um, I don't know if you have any uh, people around where you live that might have a there's kiln. There's a spray you could put on it. You think there's so a spray? I'm sure. Or that or just, I'm sure somebody watching knows some kind of a lacquer you could put all over it that would, that would seal it up and kill the bugs inside. Yeah, he says maybe, you know, we're going to have to research. Or if anybody on here that's watching knows... Um, any tips for Lisa? That's something that we we don't know, you know. Um, it's kind of one of those things that um, we've had some stumps at the mill, but they're usually they usually go into the kiln, um, or they're left, you know, they're a part of something off of you know something that else that we're cutting. So we know that they've still been through the kiln. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to research on that. And if you find it before I do, Lisa, let me know because that's a, that's a great question. And Kim, um, I have the link up above. I'm going to try, I'll try to put it on here again. Those stars are not on the essential stencils, um, website, but they have another site. I'll put it on here. It's freedom flag templates. And um, that's just something. What? Your code. Yeah, I just put to it on save there. Them 10%. Yeah, I just put on my code and the link to that, Kim, if you want. And it will um, it'll save you 10% if you want to order that stencil or any of the other essential stencils. You can use the code MRS2019 um, on essential stencil site if you're going to order any other um, stencils. So. Um, I have that too, and I'll put it on here later. Oh, Clint Hansen is watching. Hi, Clint. Yeah, we haven't seen you guys forever. You're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get together. Um, I've seen some of the things that you're doing, and you're making some really cool stuff. Um, I hope you're staying busy, and maybe we can see you soon. Um, oh. Lisa, there you go. Sally says there's a spray or something to kill bugs. Google it and I should tell you. Okay, so guys, I'm going to flip this back around. And now you can see how cool that looks all torched. Um, and keep in mind, some of these are going to stay like this right here. And then these are going to get stained red. So we're going to open up the stain. Um, what we have, um, for those of you that were asking about the stain um this is what i got at lowe's and it was a clear tint based it's just minmax wood stain and um they have different colors up above and we had it tinted so this one is the red 
and we're going to do the stripes um, every other one of course in the red stain so we'll shake this up a little bit make sure it's Madeline um, I get all of my stencils from um, essential stencils and um, you can use my code if you ever want to go on there and order. It's um, whenever you check out, there's code MRS, which stands for Miller's Rustic Sawmill, and then 2019, and it'll save you 10%. Um, I have the link for the flag in this new in the scrolling feed if you want to check that out too. So that's the stencil that we're going to be using for our flag. And the size of this flag is 32 by 20. Um, Seal those stumps with resin. Randy, good idea. I don't have an answer for that one. So I think Lisa will take whatever tips she can get on this live video tonight. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to plug my phone back in. Flip this around. Let's see if we can set this up and I can show you what we're doing. So we're going to just aim it like that. Let me know if um, you can't see. Um, but we're just going to take, we don't have any special brushes or anything like that. Um, we have the same um, wood stain in the blue and it's Minwax wood stain and it's a clear base. And then we had it tinted. So I'm just going to scoot this up a little bit and you can see this is what we're starting with that we just torched. Um, we're going to do that one red. You want to do the red and I'll yeah. do the blue? You're going to do the red and I'll do the blue? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi Cindy from Indiana. Thanks for watching you guys. We are attempting our first um, couples live and so my husband's going to help me Put on some red stain and I'm gonna do some of the blue so I'm gonna just scoot these down we could do some pop colored wood because my pop just spilled <laughs> all over the table we could stain it with my Dr. Pepper. She said it was pop. It's pop. <laughs> At least it's not all over the floor. Oh, hi, Bailey. Hi, Cynthia. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you're just hopping on, um, we are doing an American flag, a rustic American flag build. And um, it's just kind of a precursor. We're gonna do a couple's night here at the shop. And this is what the, um, the project is gonna be for the couple's night. And I'm cleaning up pop because it just spilled all over my table. Lynn, thank you. That's, that's one of our barn doors we built. Um, whenever we got this shop, we just kinda decided to make it a showroom. Um, and show off some of the wood from our sawmill. And it's kind of become a, a place to finish some stuff. It's become a place to do some ladies nights. Um, yeah, we meet customers here. Um, this way they can see what the woods look like in a finished state as opposed to when you go to the sawmill, it's really cool too. Um, it's just um, kind of overwhelming sometimes because you can't always see what the wood looks like in a finished state. So, um, oh, you guys, look. So this, this is the red stain. If you can see that really well. But you can see where the dark that it was torched shows through there. Cindy, we are in um, King City, Missouri, which is about an hour and a half north um, kind of northeast, I guess, of Kansas City, but um, we're in northwest Missouri where it's really, really cold right now. So, we do private classes. yeah, we do private classes here. Um, get ready to do our first couple's night, and um, 
We're excited about that. Can you tell? <laughs> and he's doing all the work, so not really, but you are, you're staining. Mm -hmm. So if God's country, Clint says, sure, right. um, Randy, oh, okay, I'm trying to follow the questions. I'm sorry, you guys. I took my, if I take my eyes off of it for a minute, it just has been shooting up. Um, I'm not ignoring your comments, and if I don't answer you on here tonight um, while I'm talking, I'll definitely try to answer your comment um, in after the video. Um, we are using, hang on and I'll tell you the color. I gotta wipe that one off. Um, maybe I'll tell you the color. Hmm. I don't know if it has the color on the top of the lid or not. Yeah, it does. Oops. I just stripped that out there. I'm gonna have to sand it off. Yep. And flip it over. Flip it over and burn. Yeah. My bad. Um, I don't know. I'm looking for the color of that and I don't see it. Um, I'm gonna have to look, but I got it at Lowe's. The it's Minwax wood stain and I have a clear tint base. And then um I picked out the blue above the little display and then the red. Um I can post the colors on here. Because I'm not actually, I see what they used to mix them, but I'm not seeing the actual name of the stain on there. Um, but I'll have to look. Um, and I'm going to tell you, you know how I said earlier, if you were watching or if you, if you just hopped on, um, this was our first time building this. And um, we just, we've never done it before. So it's trial and error. And I just totally dropped blue stain on one of the boards that's not supposed to have blue stain on it. So we're flipping it over, we're rolling with it, and he's torching that side of it. So no big deal, no harm done, didn't ruin my project, everything's good. Um, wood is pretty forgiving. And even whenever we do ladies nights um, or paint nights up here with paint, um, we try to let people know it's paint. Um, I did have a friend of mine, she came in for, um, I think, I don't know, it was for the por one of my porch board signs, and um, we tried to decoupage this sign, not even thinking about it going outside, um, and it, we just didn't do a good job, it didn't turn out the way she wanted, and guess what, we're able to run that through our planer, and we're going to sand it all off, and she's going to do something else on it, so... Um, don't freak out if you have something, you know, that goes wrong. Usually it's fixable, and especially whenever you're working with paint, just relax, and, um, you know, you can always sand it off. Just like that stain, if we had our sander, we could have sanded it off. Um, I'm still reading comments, you guys. Um, 68. Who... Where are you, Cindy? It's 68? It won't get above 20 here. I would take 68. Um, oh, hi, Michael, my cousin. Hi, Michael. I love you. That's my cousin. He lives out in Kansas. I'm sure it's cold and windy out there, too. See, he fixed. says, hey, Bucky. Hey, how you doing? Oh, Jeannie. That's good information. She's got waterproof Mod Podge. Now that's that's good to know. I didn't know that. Well, all of this info will be up somewhere for us to get it. Lavina, I will make it available. I've got all of the sizes of every board that we cut. So um, if you want to figure out how we did it, um, I'll put directions up on our page. Um, if you haven't liked our Facebook page, we're Miller's Rustic Sawmill. Like our page, follow our page. Um, we're going to be doing more of this kind of stuff um, on here. And um, definitely this, I'm trying to remember, the size of this flag is actually 32 by 20. So I, I'll put the dimensions and the colors 
Um, and the stains. We built it to match the stencil, basically. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, so the stencil that we're using is, um, I have the link in my comments. I think I've put it up there twice. I use essential stencils, um, stencils. And if you're gonna order from them, definitely plug in my code at checkout. Um, it is MRS, which stands for Miller's Rustic Sawmill, not, or Mrs. I like to say it stands for Mrs. But um, <laughs> it's MRS202019. So you can use that code at checkout and save 10%. This is a separate link. It is not, I'm gonna just clarify for anyone that goes to the essential stencils. Um, this one is not on their site there, but the link to this one is in our comments. I'll post it again. And you can use that code on the site as well to get the stars. Um, I know someone said earlier that they were looking for the star stencil and it's not on there. And you're right, it's not. It's on a separate site that they have some specialty, um, I think, stencils on. So that's kind of a secret. So if you, um, I didn't know that either until um, I went to do this tonight, but um, that's where it's at. How thick is this mylar? Oh. I'm not sure. This, this is what you're talking about. I don't know how thick this is. It's not thick at all, but it's very sturdy. Um, I have used their stencils over and over um, since I've gotten them, and um, they're they're awesome stencils. Freedom flags. Thank you, Clint. Clint just posted that link again. So if you're looking for the flags and you're wanting to do a rustic flag, um, there's the link, and that code will save you 10%. Do you mean to stain yours too? Oh yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to stain the blue, but I'm just too busy talking. I'm so good with that. that's what happens. Um, I ramble. Oh, let me see. Thank you from wa for watching from all over. My goodness, you guys, that's awesome. Harrison Valley. Five, oh, you say they're mostly five millimeter. I honestly couldn't tell you. I What I do know um, is that I was looking for a great vertical stencil that I could reuse here in our shop for our porch board signs. And those have worked awesome. So um, since then I've gotten other stencils from them as well. And um, I was looking for a reusable option um, just because uh, I didn't want to deal with vinyl, and um, I found them whenever I started doing some of my ladies' nights, and um, it's they've been phenomenal. The packaging, everything about that company has been great. So, um, anyway, let me see. You're from Texas. Awesome. Yeah, Kevin, it may be thicker. I, I don't know. Like I said, um, this stencil was on... It's, I, I mean, I've had some other reusable stencils. This one is pretty durable. Most of theirs that I've found though, I mean, that I have, I feel like are, are pretty hefty weight, I guess I would say. They're gonna hold up. You can sell 25 <coughs> every time. Yeah, yep. Anyway, I'm not doing my part. Bucky is doing my part. That's why we're doing a couple's so night. So that's why there's a couple's night, <laughs> so the guys can work and the girls can talk. Isn't that how that works? Maybe? I don't know. I know the ladies are going to want to torch some of the wood like you did, though. That might be too dangerous. No. No. It's too much fun. Oh, you're watching from Virginia. I saw Tom Gray on here. I'm pretty sure. I think he said hi to you, Bucky. Oh, hi, Tom. I'd talk, but I'm too busy working. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got him working, Tom. Don't distract him. He's staining. He's staining my. He's staining my project. <laughs> <laughs> oh heck. Yes, Barbara, they are great stencils. Um, I have used them over and over and over. And um, I, 
I just got some others that I haven't even put to use. So, um, what else? We need to make. We need to. We need some more wood for Make Forty Eight Lab. Tom, we can help you with that. Come up. Come up to the mill with your your truck, or we can bring some down. Tell us what you need. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and say this on here. If um, you see our friend Tom, he's talking about Make 48 Lab. Um, Make 48 is a an inventor's show for um, people who make things and invent them. It's a, it's a competition. And um, we have gotten to go be a part of that the um, past couple years and they um, if you are interested or if you're an inventor if you're a maker check out make 48's website google them look for them on facebook at make 48 um, they bring a competition of where it teams together where they get guidelines and they get you know 48 hours to actually make something it's kind of similar to what you see on Shark Tank and stuff like that. But um, a lot of cool products come out of that competition and um, a lot of neat ideas. So if you're curious about what Make 48 is, um, that's something that we are so thankful to be a part of, yes. um, getting to support that. And um, you can definitely go follow their page, go check out the competition, um, go check out the show. It airs on public television shows across the country. And um, anyway, yeah, just wanted to add that in there. We, uh, Clint Hansen was on here earlier too. Clint, I don't know if you're still on. Clint was a um, winner of the first yeah, season. Yeah, he was um, one of the part of the winning team of the first season um, of Make 48. So their invention um, uh, is still in production. And um, Clint, if you're still on here, say hi um, because. <laughs> Uh, that's it's just a really cool show it's a it's a maker show and um, there's a lot of cool things that happen behind the scenes it brings a lot of people together it um, it just brings a lot of neat ideas there's Clint right there yeah so Clint was um, part of the team that won the very first season and um, they made a very cool cutting board which we have actually part of the prototype sitting here in our shop mm -hmm. and um, we always like to tell that story. We sit in Northwest Missouri and, um, you know, to get to be a part of something so cool that is right down in Kansas City and meet all these people from all over the world, all over the country um, that are part of this Make 48 um, Inventor Show is, um, has been pretty... Um, a blessing. Yeah, it's been a blessing for us. We definitely are blessed to have made friends along the way with that. And we like supporting it. We always think it's really cool whenever um, people decide that they can make things with their hands. So we support that all the time. And um, we hope to do a lot more of that in our community here in King City, too. Um, <clears throat> but And Amy Gray is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The war begins, Tom. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Through Make 48, um, yeah, we've met a lot of great people. Michael. Oh. So my cousin Michael is asking, what's the largest size slab that we can make? We can make, we can cut up to 74 inch and 13 and a half foot long. I don't know if he heard you. We can cut 74 inches wide and 13 and a half foot long. So. He's looking for, he says it's a four by eight out of the question. No. 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 It's not, Michael. Are you looking at making a table? <clears throat> Randy Noble, sounds fun. Sand Carver's welcome there. Um, Randy Noble, anybody's welcome there. And um, it's just a process of 
Um, I think sending in some and applying to be a team, getting a team together to be a part of the competition. So you can go check out their website um, or find them on Facebook, Make 48. <coughs> and something coffee. we've learned about maker spaces all over. Mm -hmm. We didn't know it was possible. Amy, I need, Amy needs a stencil to finish the stars on our flag in our shed. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I didn't know you had a flag in your shed, Tom. <coughs> Hopefully that stencil will work on it. That'd be awesome. Amy, I'll have to bring it down. You can borrow it. Bucky just torched all this wood. You guys missed it. And stained um, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you stain it? Are you sure? I thought I stained it. Um, I didn't stain this. He just stained all of this while I was talking. And he just torched all of this while I was talking. But that's okay. I love you. I you love did you a good too. job. You did a really good job. Um, I don't know if you guys... Tom, you weren't on here. He was playing with fire. Um, what? You guys should come up and do the couples night. Yeah. We're going to do a couple's night doing this project. So I'm going to pull my um, tripod down and I'm going to show you guys how this is all stained since um, Bucky stained it all. <laughs> and um, oh, right there is Freedom Flag Templates, you guys. That is the site. Um, I think it, the link's been put up here a few times if you're wanting those stars. Um, definitely go check them out. Use my code MRS2019. Oh, you guys should carve the stars. That's a really good idea. Maybe on our second flag, we can try that. Yes. <laughs> ah, I like that idea a lot. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip this around so you guys can see what my husband just did. And there it is. So you guys, we use stain. That is blue stain. Um, Tabby, um, it's only been seven years. Love your partner in crime. <laughs> couples crafting. Love it. Yeah, we are doing a couples craft night. But we're calling it DIY. So, so guys don't get the wrong idea that they can be crafty. Um, we have built some furniture, um, farm tables. We have um, customers that build legs for us as well. If you're looking for metal legs, we, if you're wanting a custom table, that is um, something that we can help you with for sure. Yeah, that looks good. You guys, that is... Um, what did I say? It's 32 by 30. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a good, oh, 32 by 20. Sorry. Um, yeah. And you can see where we torched the wood. If you missed that part, we took a little torch. We, meaning my husband and, uh, <laughs> then we stained it. <laughs> um, again, we meaning my husband. Not me. I started to, but um, someone's got to talk. Let's see. Tabby, definitely let us know what we can help you do with the table. Um, get some dimensions, get moved in, figure out what you're wanting, looks-wise, and um, all of that. It's not going to work. Well, I thought I had them. Sorry, guys. This tripod is junk. I'll just tell you that. I'm gonna order a new one. Um, okay, so for all of you stencil people, I'm going to go ahead and use our stencil. We're gonna put some stars on this flag. I'm gonna tape it down. Is this the part you wanted to do? We have to nail it together first. Oh yeah, you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you don't want stars to So win. yeah, that's probably a good idea. So he says we're gonna flip it over and we're going to put this together um, before we do the stars. That way um, we make sure that they're on the right where they need to be and they're not all crooked and crazy. 
Sherry, it is a beautiful blue. It's perfect. Um, I'm going to try to find the name of that because I was looking earlier. Someone asked about the name of the, the stain. Maybe it is royal. I thought it was royal. My husband thinks it's royal, but I don't know the name of the red, and I don't see them on the can. So we had them mixed. Um, this is what we started with. In at Lowe's, we went and got this, and it just is a clear tint base. And then um, I'm, I think you are right. I think the blue was, a, was called Royal, and I just took it back to the paint desk, and they mixed it for us. And then the red, yeah, we did the same. That. So um, so we're going to flip this over now that it's stained, and we're going to attach the boards to the back so it all stays together. So I am going to just go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and use this. <clears throat> Like I said, this is, this is our first time doing something like this together. It's our first time doing a flag. We do a lot of projects and have done a lot of trial and error with the, the sawmill business together. But um, as far as doing a project in here at the shop, this is a first. Yep. Definitely our first live like this. So he's just reversing those. Michael, definitely get with us. And Clint said burning wood also preserves it. That's good. Remember you saw that on, where was it, in China? They burn the wood and temper it for outdoors? I don't remember. I have looked. Because you asked me about if that would work for trailer floors. Maybe I did. I have done so much research over the last five years with this sawmill business. I've, I have a lot of, we have a lot of information. We don't always get put on the spot. I'm not quite sure. Good projects. Looks great. Thank you, Randy. So we flipped it all over. This is the back of the flag. And I am going to tell you that for our project night, we will have single individual boards that go down. But um, tonight, we have kind of makeshift boards that are going on the back, only because... I got the wrong staples. Only because... Wait, wait, wait. What did you say? Melissa had me get the wrong staples. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you'll appreciate this. Yep. Stay so, late. I will say, we, you guys... He has three other staple guns that he got today to try to staple these boards. And um, we tried using the other staplers and it didn't work. And so he put the staples into the Stanley stapler and lo and behold, it worked. So I don't know what that means. It drove them in. But... It, it did. It, it put them into the wood and we're able to use them. So what we're doing now is putting some wood glue on. And I can't. Okay, there we go. Clint, don't make fun of my gluing. <laughs> See, anybody can do this, you guys. If we can do it, you Thanks. can do it. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. He's just stapling. I gotta get on the other side of you. Or you, there you go. <clears throat> so he's gonna do that all the way down. <laughs> Clint's laughing at you. <laughs> Tell them we were going to have a solid board. Jamie Brown. Definitely need to have another night. James and I will be there. Ooh, that's loud. It's loud in my ear. I don't know how loud it is on, on Facebook. <laughs> So 
so this is the middle. So that's where the seam is for the, um, the stars part on the other side. How thick is the wood you are using? It's supposed all to be all half inch. It, half inch? Is what these are. Okay. And the backboards were going to be half inch, but I didn't buy long enough staples. So this is only quarter inch. I'm trying to stand back out of your way. <laughs> ah, someone said it's the union. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> ah. Cindy, I don't know if you can hear me. Why are you not using an air, air gun? Huh? I don't know. You don't know? Poor people got poor ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cynthia, I think I said the same thing. Um, but also, so a couple things. I couldn't buy short enough staples. Yeah, short enough nails. Nails. For us. So the nails, for some reason, I guess today, whenever he was looking for the nails, you couldn't get short enough nails. <laughs> um, all of the boards, yes, Cindy, are half inch thick, other than these back here. We um, just pulled these tonight out of my back room because we had half inch boards for this, but the staples wouldn't go through. Um, once we decided we had, we were gonna use the staples. Um, also, let's see. Cause I bought them too short. Yeah. The staples that he bought were too short to go through the half inch. That's good enough for government work, carry on. <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Sorry. Okay, Cindy, um, we had half inch thick boards over, I'll show you on the, they're sitting over here with all these screws in them. Um, that's what we were gonna use on the back as well because everything we cut for it was half inch. But because the um, staples, weren't long enough to go through those. Um, and he couldn't find screws short enough yes. to go through them today. Um, we found these um, thinner boards in my back room and we pulled those out to, to do this tonight. So for the couple's night, we'll have that figured out for sure. But we used wood glue. The staples, I think, probably work fine. The staples work good if you... And uh, then it's glued as well. And it makes it lighter to hang. Someone's on punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Clint says glue it. Yep. All right. That looks awesome. You want to hold that up? Yeah. And we'll just kind of show how big it is. So you can kind of see next to Bucky about how big it is. So... That is our torched sign. And now I can do, now I can, now I can finally do my part. If you have two people staining the boards, it doesn't take near as long either. <laughs> ah, you're funny. <laughs> funny, funny. Okay, so. Okay. Oh, you. Thank you. I like that Christmas tree too. I don't know where it went, but um, probably over there. I've, I've painted a lot of those um, up here. So now I can move this around and I'm gonna use my stencil and I'm just gonna go on here. Um, oh, he's so smart. Tom said you're so smart. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> So I'm going to 
take my stencil on. Hopefully my phone is not gonna die. I gotta make sure I'm charging you guys, I'm sorry. I have it plugged in, I'm just not sure my charger's working. Um, so I'm gonna speed this up just in case. Something keeps popping up. Okay. So I'm gonna use a little bit of painter's tape. Sorry for the shakiness, you guys. We'll figure it out at some point, but. Oh, awesome, Clint. Um, let us know if we can help you with that. Clint is gonna, he works with veterans and first responders creating artwork. I'm going to do this with them. Yeah. We made a slide board. Tell them for that veteran. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Clint, we'll have to share with you a project that we made for a veteran. Um, it, we made a slide board so he could use it to get in and out of his vehicle um, in his wheel his wheelchair. and get into his wheelchair. So um, that was that's probably been one of our favorite, most favorite projects that we've done. It was a live ed piece for their anniversary. Lots of people mess this up. You got the star right side up. Um, <laughs> Does that look right? And everything is backwards right now. So whenever I flip the camera around, I'll show you, it'll be right. Um, I'm gonna grab my paint. I'm gonna get my stencil brush. Now we're gonna stencil some stars on here. So I'm just using acrylic craft paint. I'm not going to use very much because stencils really don't take a lot. Um, we'll get this project wrapped up so we can show it off. This is something we've been wanting to do for a while, but Clint, for sure, let us know whenever you get ready to do that. Um, love to be a part of that if, if it works out or help you. So let us know. So I'm just taking my stencil brush, some white paint. And I'm going to stencil some stars on. I'm just going to pounce my brush up and down on this a little bit and get it going. You guys are hanging with us. We've been on for a while. Thanks for watching. That was something else that whenever um, we do a project, um, I definitely like to do it, to time it, to see about how long it's gonna take. And I don't know, I don't even know actually what time it is. I'm not even sure. Um, I know that we talk a lot on here, so that takes a little bit of time away from it, but um, this is gonna turn out really cool. So I'm just pouncing on my white stars, some white paint. Randy does stuff for the Relay for Life. This is a cool project for a lot of things. Um, like I said, it's something we've been wanting to do for a while. This one, <coughs> this one will go in our home eventually at some point when we take it out of here <laughs> and we're not using it maybe as an example or we'll just make another one. Oh, it's 11.15. So really only an hour and 15 minutes on this live. Um, Sally, I have a link for this stencil and it is, um, it is in the feed of the comments. It's in there maybe three times now. If you scroll through the comments, there's also a code, um, and a link that will save you 10%. So if you go on through here and, um, use it, then, um, you'll save 10%. It is, uh, it's a branch off of essential stencils. So um, if you are familiar with any stencils or anything, or even if you're not, if you've never ordered stencils before, um, you can use my code MRS2019 at checkout on essentialstencils.com. Um, that's where I get all of my stencils. They are all reusable stencils. 
try a sponge brush. I have used the sponge brush, you know, um, for my stencils and I it just, it depends on what I'm working on, I guess. Sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't. I'm, I'm just most comfortable with a brush. I think um, one of the things I've learned using stencils is um, patience. It just takes some patience. Um, I think the very first time I used uh, the essential stencils, stencils, um, they have a really nice tutorial in their stencils that kind of goes over some guidelines. And um, if you follow that really well, um, it's, it's good advice. And one of the best tips I think that they gave me whenever I was using their stencils for the first time, they hopped on and they were like, you know, it takes patience. And so unlike, you know, whipping out a bunch of these and, cause I was just going fast. I do most everything fast. I'm always in go mode. So it seems like, you know, I was trying to get it done, but the truth is, um, for the stenciling, you just kind of got to slow down, take your time. And, um, Sometimes, depending on what paint you're going over, um, sometimes you got to do layers of it, and and that's just how that's just how it goes. So there are all different types of methods for the stenciling, and um, I have a lot of people ask me what you know what I use, how I do this or how I do that, and honestly, I think sometimes it's just kind of like what we said with the flag, just trial and error, and um, finding what works for you and finding what you like and not being afraid to, to try it. <clears throat> yeah, this is, this is the first flag that we've ever built. We've never done this before. Oh, thank you for putting my link up. I appreciate that, that's awesome. So that's exactly where you can go get the, um, the stencil for the stars that I'm using right now. Uh, I don't have any of their brushes, Kim, not yet. And I've used a foam roller too, and it can be tricky because, yeah, you don't want to soak it with paint because I've done that too. Like I said, you learn from, you learn from trying it out and trial and error. Um, I've gotten several different things from Hobby Lobby that I've tried, and I've tried the makeup sponges because um, someone really said that those you know those would work awesome and I see people use them I just think I'm not doing something right with the makeup sponges so I'm using this really this is a really stiff bristled or stiff bristled brush I can't even say it <coughs> but I the fun part for me is just whenever of course you get to take it off and get to see all of these stars and then it'll be a finished project. So I'm doing the hard part. Bucky got, my husband got to do the easy part. If you're just hopping on, we just built this flag. The easy parts. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing easy. Um, and my husband, we were, we came on to do this um, DIY of this flag together. And I'm laughing because, <coughs> excuse me, um, <clears throat> he just stained it all and basically built it all while I was just talking away. Someone's got to, someone's got to do the camera work. <laughs> but we are getting ready to have a couples night here and this is what our project is going to be. So <clears throat> watch for that on our Facebook page. If you haven't liked our page, like our page, Miller Thrustic Sawmill, follow us. Watch for some more live tutorials and DIYs because um, we're probably going to be doing a little bit more um, of things where we're using some more of our wood to make some projects and show you how to build some things and um, show you how to finish some cutting boards, um, even just some basic staining and um, wood tips. So um, something that we were talking about earlier tonight that we always like to inform people about is um, the moisture in your wood. So if you're gonna do any um, woodworking and finishing products or projects with wood, you wanna make sure that your moisture content is 8% or below. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have a project that down the road is gonna warp 
or twist or that moisture is going to come out of it. Wherever you buy your wood, just make sure you <coughs> yep. Them. yep, if you're wherever you're getting your project pieces. We own a sawmill business here in northwest Missouri and so we cut all of our wood ourselves and um, dry it so it's all kiln dried. So that's it's um, we don't buy it at the box stores. So if you're buying it at the box stores just just ask them um, you know if they know which of their woods are if any of them are dried you can always get a moisture tester if you're buying your wood from somewhere else and you can test that wood yourself as well. Oops. I don't know what's happening. I like to chisel out the stars. You know what? I would love to do that. Um, I think that um, someone suggested that earlier and um, that would be so cool to carve them out. So we may attempt that at some point once we figure it out. This is this is pretty new to us. I know there's um, some people on here who have done some of these before and um, <clears throat> if you've carved them out or you've chiseled them out, I, I would like to know. I thought about even, you know, how cool it might even be to trace them and then wood burn them. So that that's an option too. I'm just kind of going back over my stars to kind of Fill them in a little bit, some of the ones that have dried. Oh, Clint, thank you. You know, um, we like all of our customers. We make friends with a lot of our customers. And um, we just like to take time. We have what we call um, slab sales on um, Saturdays. And um, sometimes we try to do it once a month. Sometimes we do it twice a month. But um, that way, it gives us time to just meet with people, talk to them, um, help them. We do a lot of custom orders for people who are buying um, live edge slabs to build tables or um, bar tops or shelves, some, just different projects. And uh, we, we like to, we always like to meet people and see what they're making. That's one of the coolest things about what we do. Um, We've also, you know, we have a lot of people that come from some great distances, actually. You know, we have some people that come from South Missouri up to our mill. And um, they, they buy their wood there from, or here from us. And they go back and they've got, you know, side businesses. Most of the people that um, come and buy from us, a lot of people that buy from us, um, make furniture. Uh... They have crafts, they make cutting boards. Um, so that's the part that we like to, we like to help people be able to do that as well. We think that that's one of the coolest parts of our job is seeing what people make. And then, you know what, if it becomes a business for somebody um, on their end of it, that's fantastic. We wanna support that. Um, we've had several customers who have started their own businesses um, and we've got to be a part of that, you know, along the way from the very beginning, some of them. And um, we refer customers to them. If you are in a certain area in Missouri and we have someone that is a customer of ours that we know makes furniture or can build um, cabinets or tables and different things, we refer you to them and you come pick out the wood with us and um, we work with them. We've even, um, so one of the coolest projects probably that we've done has been for a local customer. We went to her property and we harvested a tree that her great great grandfather had planted. And then we put it on our great big slabbing mill at our sawmill. We cut it into slabs and it is now um, an heirloom dining room table in her home. So um, we were able to cut that, dry it, and find the right person to uh, finish that table for her. And um, it and, is and, a beautiful project. And before we even knew, the guy we had build the table was a cousin. Yeah. Yeah. So the guy that... And we didn't know that. That ended up, we ended up connecting her with to build her table 
was actually they once they got to talking um they found out that they were actually related so that was even that was just even that was like a god thing i think those things are just god things it was meant to be we got our grandfather's brand and branded the table too yeah The tree was planted in 1868. I don't remember. Maybe. It was right after the Civil War. Yeah, it was a very, very old, old tree. So we can do those special heirloom projects. I would burn me and Cave on my pool stick holder. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So I just put the stencils stenciled this bad boy did my part it was really hard let me tell you <laughs> it took me a long time and i'm gonna flip this around so we're gonna pull that off and see how it looks how cool is that that is beautiful you guys look that looks awesome that stencil is awesome Okay, now I'm gonna have you hold it up so we can show it off again. And there it is. We just completed it, you guys. There is our first ever rustic flag, American flag. Stained, burned, and stenciled. Very cool, that turned out great. Yeah, it did. <coughs> and it's not real heavy, is it? Oh, no. No, it doesn't weigh anything. So it's a good size. Yeah, it mm -hmm. looks, it does look beautiful. That looks really cool. Not too shabby for our first time. Yeah, Tom said, wow. So look at that, you guys. That looks great. Yeah, everyone's looking at it. You can hold it oh, up. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We'll just hold it up for a minute and show it off. And you can see how that we, if you were on here earlier, we torched, we torched the wood before we stained it. You want to see the back. We'll flip it around. Um, Bonnie, this is not what we had in mind. We kind of, um, These are be folding. we kind of improvised tonight because um, we didn't have the right staples for the other boards. All of the lumber is half inch thick, but these are all glued and then we stapled them. Like I said, these would typically be one long board across there. But that's the back and we'll flip it around again. Yeah, that looks so cool. We love it. So I will try to put stuff up here. Um, details about how we did this and um, what we used. My husband made us a farm table from white oak had a natural opening that we left so we filled it with blue turned out yeah I you know what Cindy we've seen <clears throat> a lot of um, people that do um, the the colors where they fill those those holes um, with epoxy or color um, there's a lot of neat things you can do so thank you guys thank you so much it did turn out pretty good Bucky did a really good job good job 